Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Syndicate. Syndicate is brought to you by PDU Games. It's for two to five players, ages 13 and up, and games range anywhere from 90 to 120 minutes. It is the year 3105, and humanity has spread to the stars following the invention of interstellar travel in the 22nd century. Greed and human desperation fueled a wave of corporate-led colonization of remote solar systems, and in one recently colonized solar system, Octurus, an authoritarian regime known as the Sovereign, has long reigned over all planets, moons, and space stations with an economic iron fist. More recently, however, following a nearly a decade of political infighting and civil war, the Sovereign's grip of Octurus has started to slip. Opening the door, for criminal organizations to proliferate. You control a young, enterprising criminal syndicate in the outer fringes of Octurus, trying to stay under the radar of the Sovereign while you compete with other criminal syndicates for money, power, loyal crew, and advanced technologies. Complete missions, set up criminal operations, and take down anyone that stands in your path to building the most formidable interplanetary criminal empire in the system. Syndicate is played over six to eight rounds. Players win by accumulating the most wealth and victory points. Players will generate wealth by completing missions and setting up bases across Octurus's 18 territories. So just a quick look at setup, we'll hit some of the high points here. The bonus tiles putting out into the solar system on the main board. They're color coded and there's more than what you'll place. So the bonuses are gonna be different every game, but they range from like a tech level upgrade to potentially giving you the chance to reroll dice and things like that. But these will be what you acquire when you build bases. And you've got the XO, you have the middle and the inner. And again, they're all color coded, so easily placed, but you're gonna mix them up and put them out on the board. And then you have the alert level and the sovereign ship that potentially you're going to draw attention to yourselves as you become more and more powerful as a crime syndicate. You'll set up the round tracker as well as a series of cards. Now, the sovereign cards require a bit of setup. You have the beginning of the end card which will trigger the end of the game and there is some special setup instructions for that. But this deck will basically have eight cards in it as you move through the rounds. And then you have the operations deck and each player is going to get four cards from the operations deck. And then you have the advanced tech and the base. You'll put those all to the side. It's clearly marked on the board. And you'll have various things around the board. You have the consequence dice and the crackdown die. And then you have all the currency of, of the solar system. You have crystals that are worth 10. You have gold that's worth five and silver that's worth one unit. So uh, you also have tiles for when you create your bases and so forth. And of course the assault ship, which we'll get to first player token. And then you have the syndicate cards. You're going to shuffle these up and deal two to each player. Each player will then choose what syndicate they want to start with. And these player boards have a little bit more information about the syndicate that you're going to be playing. But the key thing is on the other side. So you'll be setting up your player board and all the different syndicates have different starting resources as well as bonuses for that particular character. So uh, at the top of your board, you have your sovereign credits, and then you have your political influence and your crew, and you're gonna be placing the units based on that currency that we looked at before. Now, everyone has a different starting tech level as well, and you'll take your color-coded cubes to go with your syndicate and place them on there. Everyone has action dice. You're going to set those up as well. And then you also have an assault level and the different, again, the different syndicates are going to have different starting assault levels potentially. And then you'll look over at your bonus to see whatever that is. You might have a starting base right out of the gate, or you might get additional resources and things like that. But all the syndicates do very different things and have some very interesting starting mechanics. So every round of the game is divided into three main phases. You have the player's turn, which is full of all sorts of actions. And then phase two is pulling a sovereign card, which depending on the alert level could be really catastrophic for you. But then you'll move to phase three, which is the resource collection, all the things you've worked so hard to gather. All right, so on the player's turn, you have several actions you can perform. Completing missions is one. Assault other players' bases or you might activate a sleeper. 
Um, you might purchase a new base or fortify an existing base. You might purchase a tech level increase or an assault level increase on your player boards. Now, you can also exchange resources, which is pretty nice, and you can sell unwanted operation cards. Or you might play one of the bonus chips that you received when you created a base. All right, so let's jump into some of these and take a closer look. So let's first take a look at acquiring a base. You're gonna be paying the cost. There's a handy chart showing you what the different zones and different areas of the solar system are gonna cost you in order to buy it and to fortify it, and then also to maintain it. Because in the resource collection phase, if you have a base, you might have to have crew on hand. You might be spending crew every round in order to maintain that base. So that's mostly going to happen in the, in the middle and the inner parts of the solar system. But you're gonna be using all your resources to handle these bases. You know, you're using diplomacy, you're using your credits and your crew. All the resources at your disposal to either buy or fortify or upgrade these different bases. And sometimes these bases are specialty bases. So you can have a military base, which then allows you to upgrade your assault level on your player board, but you'll have to do that over time and you'll also have the ability to have a research base out there, again, according to the icons that are in play, depending on where you build your base. But the research is going to allow you to upgrade your tech level uh, of your player board as well. So those are probably the two big ones that you're looking for, but then there's also mining, which is gonna give you additional resources. And you can even create a base where there's a casino, and the casino really is, is just gonna give you plus one on your rolls, or when you're doing certain activities in the game. But uh, the different specialty bases are really crucial. And as you uh, acquire those and try to upgrade your assault level and upgrade your tech level, those are things that are you're really gonna come into play later in the game. And when you do purchase a base, you will be placing a token out as well as putting your cube on the token showing that you own this base. Also collecting the base card. The base card will outlie what it costs for you to purchase the base as well as what it costs to fortify it. But it also shows you what your income will be in the resource phase. So, and if you need to spend crew to hang on to this base as well, it'll show all that. And the card is crucial because there are times in the game where you'll have to flip the card because something has happened. Maybe you've had a blockade or something from the Sovereign things like that, or you are unable to pay your tax. And so you will be unable to collect resources in that resource round. But the base card is super crucial to help you keep track of everything for your different bases. And it really is a great way to gain resources throughout the game. And since we're talking about bases, what about attacking or taking one over? Yes, you can do that. You can assault a base, you take the ship and you're gonna pay five crew in order to take the ship and point it towards one of the bases you want to take over. Now you're gonna roll an action dice. And if you just pay the five crew, you're gonna to have to roll a six in order to conquest or take over the base. Now, if the base is fortified, that's not enough. So then you can pay additional resources. You can pay more crew, and then you can pay assault in order to lessen those dice rolls or add to your dice roll, so to say, so you can meet the requirements. So it is a really neat mechanic at how you do these conquests and try to battle it out over a certain type of base. So when you do attack a base, you are drawing attention to yourself, which is one of the ways the alert level will move up. So remember, after we get through all the actions and we go to the Sovereign deck, this is when the alert level is really gonna come into play and may be super detrimental, but you might really want after those bases. So there is some choices to be made here. So another thing you're gonna be doing is doing mission cards or operation cards, which can also be sleepers. And um, we'll take a look at both of those, but missions are very straightforward. Everything you need to know is basically on the card. And if you're doing it on a base that has, or a world that has no base, you're gonna need a certain role. You're gonna be using your action die in order to achieve this. And you can hire additional crew and use your resources to help you roll better again for this particular type of card. Now, you can also, if it's your base, you get bonuses as well. But if it's someone else's base, you can do a negotiation and cooperate and make it even easier 
to achieve, but you've got to make some deals, which is pretty fun. And then finally, you can just go after it. Even if it's an enemy base, you can really try to make that roll you're the best it can be. But again, it all is laid out right here, very easy, what you need to roll and what additional resources that you might need in order to improve your rolls. Then finally, you have the reward situation um, at the bottom of the card. And if you negotiate with someone, you might have to split up that reward and so forth. But the details of the card and where you need to be to do these things are all here on these mission cards. Really slick how these missions work and really fun. Again, with like all actions, you have to announce this as you're about to do it. And for sleeper cards, which are also operation cards, these cards are going to be kind of secret. In this case, this one is all about avoiding the sovereign card, which is the second phase of the round. But what you'll do is announce that you're going to use a sleeper card and you'll put it face down on your player board, ready for use when you need it. And these sovereign cards are gonna do all kinds of things. It might affect other players, it might protect you, things like that. And so when that alert level does max out and you try to do a mission, and let's say you fail, well, the sovereign's battleship is gonna move into that sector. And potentially, it could even move on to a world and create a blockade for whoever's base that is. If that is your base, you would take your base card and flip it over. And you would not be collecting resources on the resource round. However, you do have the option to pay 10 political influence in order to get the sovereign to move on out of there. So that is something to keep an eye on. You know, this alert level, it is a balancing act for sure. Or you might travel to the black market and purchase a tech level upgrade or purchase an assault level upgrade. And you're basically going to take one of your cubes and place it on the marker at the bottom of the board, indicating what you've spent so far. So like the first level, when you first buy into this, it's gonna cost you five, but they get you with a small sample. And the more you go back to that board, the more it's gonna cost you to upgrade the different levels. It goes from five, 10, and 15. So it does get expensive to upgrade your tech and assault levels, but it is well worth it. Now, during the resource collection phase, you will have the opportunity to remove one of your cubes from that black market uh, to help you offset the cost throughout the game. You can even, as an action, like I said before, take resources and exchange them for others. There's a whole chart on how the conversion works. And for operation cards, if you have some that you're just not gonna use, you can announce that you're going to sell one of your operation cards and move it to the discard pile and collect two resources of your choice. And finally, any of the bonus tokens that you collected, you can now activate if you so choose, um, but you can save them for later, whatever makes sense for whatever your strategy is for the game. But uh, those bonus tokens really do come in handy throughout the game. So again, then phase two of the game is all about pulling the Sovereign card. Now, in general, they're not always going to be bad. Uh, for instance, you could get this Grip Loosens, which is going to reduce the level of alert in the system. But a lot of the time, you're going to get attacks. And based on the different types of bases you have will determine how much tax you have to pay and as well as the alert level. If it's the lowest alert level, then just kidding, nothing happens. But you have to pay that tax to get the right people to look the other way. And then we move to the resource collection phase, the final phase of the round. First thing you're looking at is resetting things on your board. You're going to be resetting your action dice and your assault cubes and so forth. And then you also are going to be drawing two new operation cards. Also, you will be collecting a standard income. Based on each of the syndicates, they have a standard income they're going to be collecting every round. And then there might be bonuses and extra things that you get based on your certain syndicate. And then of course, for all the bases that you have acquired, you'll be collecting resources there as well. So you put all those over on your player board and so forth. And then you can have the ability to remove you know, uh, cubes from the black market to make your uh, either assault or tech level upgrades cheaper. So you have that option as well. And then for any bases that you still own that have research ability for either tech level or for assault, you can place a cube out there and hoping to hold on to that base long enough to increase your levels and so forth. And then you'll increment the round marker and pass the first player marker. And that ends that particular round, heading off back to the players and all the possible actions they can perform. Now, throughout the game, you might 
collect rewards. At the bottom of the board, you can potentially get rewards based on whatever's happening in the game state and whatever you've achieved. But those are outlined there and you'll put a cube showing that you've claimed those victory points. And then the game will go this way round after round until you, until you get to the sovereign card at the beginning of the end. And this card will come out and the game ends after the next full round. So that's the signal. And it can happen again in the six to eight rounds uh, the game can go. So you want to hold on to territory as long as possible and get the most points, syndicate points, and be that ultimate syndicate in the galaxy. Hey folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower Paid Preview. Everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now with that said, you know, there's a lot to like in this game, and there's a lot of depth, way more than this video shows, but the gameplay and how you manage resources and try to be that ultimate syndicate, there's a lot of fun, interesting choices to be made, and I really like the trying to take over other folks' bases with this assault ship. Tons of fun. Um, and you have to keep an eye on that alert level. Yeah, there's a lot to like about this game. But really folks, ultimately, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.